my friends. Welcome back to the bench. Today is a unique video in uh, that I'm not really reviewing anything, painting anything, or showing off a tool or whatnot. I'm going to show you the first airbrush I've used. And I'm going way back in my youth. Um, my dad spray painted for a living. He, uh, he was a jewelry painter, costume jewelry and whatnot. And um, I grew up around big spray boots and ovens where we baked uh, all the uh, everything was baked on you know in heat after he sprayed it and I, and I, from there when I was building I I was building models at a pretty young age my father was into it um, in his youth and I, I glommed onto that quick and I, I started building models with him uh, preteens and uh, still doing it to this day uh, so, uh, thank you dad for that and included with his hobby of building models he also was a spray painter. And uh, that's where I saw you mix the thinners and paints. I saw him mix it and, and strainers. I remember he had to strain everything. And they painted with these big spray guns and in these giant boots with huge, you know, 24, 36 inch fans and uh, for exhausts. And I grew up around that. Matter of fact, I would get certain models and uh, I'd have him paint them for me. And then uh, I would get die cast kits and I would strip them down if they were, you know, racing decals. I just wanted the kit. And, uh, I'd have them spray it and then bake it. I had these baked on uh, uh, lacquer paints in my for my models. My shelf always looked great because of uh, the professional jobs I had painting. But uh, getting into painting was uh, was tricky for me because uh, I hated cleaning the brush. And back then, there was not many choices. There was no internet. And uh, you, in America, we basically just had, uh, I think, Posh and uh, Badger for your airbrushes. And everything else was very exotic. Yeah, to say the least. But um, uh, these came out late 80s, I want to say. And I think Testers bought the brand around 1990. And they put their name across it. There was an Aztec airbrush. Just Aztec airbrush. And then Testers quickly bought them and put the Model Master name on it or Testers name on them. And uh, I, this is from, even the box of this says 92. Uh, where's the box of this? Hold on, guys. Let me grab the box. Here it is. It was just sitting right next to me. So I still have the box to this one. And um, there you go. 1992. And uh, that's just for this one. I think these go back to around 1990. And they ran through the mid-2000s, and then they dumped the whole line all together. And uh, it is gone for good. But this is what I got started on and used it for quite a while. Matter of fact, I started collecting them. And that's why you see just three here alone, but I, I had all kinds, different versions, metal, plastic, and uh, single. These are single uh, action, double action here. And uh, I got by, and uh, pretty stunning some of the results uh, I, I got with this. But anyway, you really can't buy them now. They're only on eBay if you're looking for one. They're not cheap. This set's probably a buck change, at least 120 150 up to 200 for some if they're still sealed. Even if they're used, they get good money. Um, but let me show you what makes them unique and, uh, and why uh, I, I glommed on to them pretty quickly. Here is the set. This is like their good set. This is their single action. And this is another single action. The hose is built into it. And uh, they're designed to go on canned air. But uh, I have all the adapters, so they all fit into my uh, compressor. I always had a compressor for these. They all use these little hoses, but you don't have to. You can actually get these adapters that fit into the end and then converts it to your regular size hose. And then from there you put in my my quick release. And But I always have the adapters to fit every one of these hoses. I have boxes of adapters, so I, I'm never at a loss for that. But anyway, this is their, this is the good model. We'll call it the good. So much, almost the top of the line. Not quite. And uh, this is it. You push down for air and pull back just like your regular airbrush. Here's where the little hose goes in the back. But for mine, like I said, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, I have the hose hooked up to the compressor. So we're gonna bypass that cheap hose system and go with mine. Anyway, here is what the unique thing is about these airbrushes, and that is it's a nozzle system, and this is the part that gets cleaned. And the different colors designate if the, if it's a fine, medium, 
or large nozzle needle. The gray is the standard. This is the most popular. It's your middle of the road. You can do everything with it. Here's how they came in these little containers. That's the whole set right there. Let me show you. You pop this out. And here is the needle right here. See it? That's the whole needle. The spring and everything. And when you go to clean it, you pop these three pieces out. And you just drop it in a cup of uh, acetone. I've left them. Oh, I've left them for like almost a week in acetone, and uh, these are solvent-proof plastics. So you let them sit forever, and they just cleaned right up, and you're ready to go. The brush really doesn't get cleaned. It's this, and this is what led me to uh, to starting my airbrushing out with them. It was just it was the cleaning was so easy. It was so daunting back then. Now I love cleaning my airbrush. It's a it's almost like a zen-like experience. I, I love cleaning it. But that pops in. This part goes back into the gray. Each one is specific to itself, so you, I wouldn't take this one and pop it in here. You know, every one is different. And they had like 12 nozzles to choose from, the ones that did splatter effects, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I had them all at one point. I had like 10 of these gray ones. I would just pop one out and put another one in while the other one was cleaning. And here's how it goes in. It goes in here. It just screws in. That's it. If you want to tighten it or loosen it, they all have a universal wrench. That's what the grooves are here for. They pop in, and that's it. It's tightened. Yeah. Now, here's where the paint comes in. It's a side feed, which is what I'm trying to test now for my, you know, my actual real airbrushes. You can hear inside here a rattle. That is more of the stoppers that block the sides in case you lose any. So let me dump these out here. And here's your paint cup. And goes right here. And there you go. You're off to town. All right? Now, if you want to do a lot more, it comes with these two sizes, even including a giant one, siphon feed with an adjustable. Look at that. It's got a ball joint, so you can tip it where you want it. I remember for a test I did, I tested a lot. So I loaded this up and just sprayed forever using this one thing. And that's it. And there you go. There's your airbrush. Now you got a really clean view of the front. They have different size cups. Look at this little tiny one that comes with this one, which is great for uh, testing because I only need a couple of drops. And you can go on either side. All right, let's pull out the jar here. Let me show you that. So what happens is you take out the stopper right here. This one is in pretty good. Hold on. Trying to get a little uh, plier out here. Here it is. So you take out the uh, the stopper on this side, and you reverse it. Just go to this side. Now the cup is on here, or the jar. Okay. Depends what hand you are. I'm used to it on this side, but I think that's mostly because of when I film. I think uh, my hand is on this side, so I put everything on one side. So the other side is open. But that's what the stopper is for. You just choose the side that uh, you want to spray it on, that you want to put the uh, cup on, or the jar. And they fit really snug, as you can see. And here's how you clean it out. When you take this, you're going to undo the nozzle. I'll walk you through it. We're going to spray some pieces. All right, there you go. What happens is, let me get a pipe bat here. You take your pipe bat, put some thinner in it, and it fits in here perfect. This one happens to fit perfect. Yeah. And you just squeeze it while you're blowing air. Nothing comes past here, and then you just clean out the front. You can even take a Q-tip in there. That's it. It's clean. Uh, my friend has one. He would take it apart once a year, but even on the inside, it doesn't get that dirty if you're doing a good job cleaning it out of here. That's it. This handles everything else. This pushes the nozzle forward. And that's it. Now, it's a universal system. Now, check this out. We'll go here with this cheaper. Look at this. It's a single action. And believe it or not, I've used this a lot. The air, it started leaking air in the back, and I put this epoxy glue around it, and it hasn't leaked since. And this one has this lever here. And it's minus and plus. Is it a plus? And that's to increase or decrease the air. I usually left it wide open. I wasn't doing any fine detail work with these. And that's it. Now the same nozzle 
fits the entire lineup. And there we go. And you're ready to go. See that? And the cups fit all the same. So it was a universal system across the board. Um, I don't know. I think someone should have picked this system up and maybe made a little higher quality instead of plastic on the nozzles and made a whole new lineup of these. And no one picked it up. Um, we, 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 I should go out and get the patent for these. Right, guys? We launch these things. You'll see how good it performs in a second. And this one has... This is a single action, same thing, not as uh, modular because the hose is attached to it, but it works just as good. I use this one a lot too, single action, but here's where you can adjust the air here with this little roller here. See that? And that's it. This one has a tan um, nozzle on it. See it? The tan is probably medium or something or large. I got to look it up. Tiny. The small, medium, large as far as the nozzles go. I had the... I had the settings on the wall. I would just look at the wall and see which one do I need, and I would just pick up. I had them on the shelf. I just picked the color up that I need. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys actually how well these things perform. I'll even do, we'll do a single action, and we'll do a double action. We'll show you both, all right? So we're going to spray. Uh, I already picked some colors out. We'll do some uh, Jump Wind Red and some Tamiya Aluminum Flat Aluminum XF16. So, we're going to thin these the same way any other airbrush. So, I'll get these thinned out 50-50. And uh, we're going to throw them in. And let me show you how this works. And we're going to take uh, the Wayback Machine and look at the first airbrush uh, I used. And uh, let me get these paints thinned. I'll meet you at the booth, my Pace spray booth. And uh, one of these hoses fits. Here we go. I think this one fits this. See, the end has the attachments into the quick release. This will go right into my uh, my air compressor, the original hose that I use. I'll show you at the booth. All right, guys, let's head over to the booth, and let's show you how good this actually works. All right, guys, let's go. We are filled up right here. Neo from Jump Wind. This is number three, red. I'm going with the gray nozzle. And I'm going to show you how to clean it out. We're going to clean it out right here in the booth. There we go. All right. Check this out. Look at how good this thing sprays. It atomizes the paint somehow terrifically. I think because uh, it's plastic, it turned off a lot of people. I guess if they, um, look at how good it goes on. <laughs> I think that's why if they took it more seriously. I did have the chrome one. I had one that was all metal. And uh, I think they were a little too expensive, too. That, that, didn't, that didn't help the cause, we'll say. But look how nice it sprays. And then just for a couple of bucks... In the day, now they're worth a fortune. You, you change the nozzles out, and you got all kinds of nozzle sizes without having to do anything. You know? And there you go. I don't know if I can get fine lines with this thing. I never really could. Eh. What am I saying? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. I'm showing you here how wide you can get it too. Yeah, the gray the gray was my favorite. It, it was just an all around good nozzle, you know. But uh, yeah, I'll show you at the bench how nice this thing sprays. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it run out. There we go. Let me get this out of the way. And this is how you clean her out. I personally didn't have to flush this and I usually wouldn't you know but you can I like to use my method that I use now as I, I flush everything in and out almost like a plunger all right let me dump this out sorry about the sound of my voice if I am drifting out here all right there we go let's blast out that okay so now we're gonna clean off the cup pop the cup out you know drop it in like I said, the acetone or the thinner, 
Now we're going to take that same acetone and thinner. Check this out. Plug it in here. And just blast some through it. All right, now, get a paper towel so we don't get too wet up here. Let me get this spoon out of the way. All right, here's what you do. I know it comes with a wrench, but I rarely used it. We're just going to take the tip off, just like that. You can see it's a little red. And into this little thinner bath it goes, right? One, pop out the spring. Two, three. And I would let it sit there, you know, 20 minutes or so when I was done with uh, airbrushing. i come back and just assemble it. It was all clean. That's it. And in here, I guess you could take a Q-tip, clean her out quick. It just blows the air through it. You can even uh, flush more thinner through it here and clean it out. But in a sense, you're ready to go. Just put another tip on it. But uh, I'll show you the single action one now. And uh, we'll paint another color. And then uh, we'll wrap it up. Look at that. What a great little airbrush. I still, uh, fond memories. I still miss it. All right, guys, let me go grab the uh, Tamiya and I'll be right back. All right, guys, next up, I'm going to show you the single action. I, I told you I was going to spray this XF15 flat aluminum. Uh, and I couldn't get it to mix, and then I realized it was all giant chunkies in here, and I, I think it's a bad bottle. Uh, unless I can really whip it up and, uh, Try and get this to blend again. I know I did this once earlier with a Tamiya jar and it did not go well. So, uh, yeah, I think the copper went bad on me too from Tamiya. Good thing these are in my area. They're like three bucks and 29 cents a jar, which is good. But uh, yeah, this one I, I just, I, I'm not going to spray that one anymore. Uh, so I got it close. Went to their silver uh, X11 and. Uh, that is already loaded up into the little cup. Same cup, interchangeable. Here we go, single action. This is 20 PSI. On this one, of course, all I have to do is push down. And uh, you adjust the air back here. As I showed you, I have it on full blast. Let's see how this goes. Hold on, I'm trying to get this dust free. Here we go. Check that out. So great, great for priming, you know. This thing would work all day. And uh, I just wish somebody would pick up on the idea and uh, re-release it. You know, a little bit higher quality, even though it, it did get the job done. I really had nothing bad to say about it. There you go. Look at it. It works smooth, easy. It did its job. It never plugged up and nothing. I never had troubles. I read a lot of guys online did, you know, but I didn't. I don't know what nozzle this is. Let's see. Oh, you know what? It's single action. I'm not going to get much out of this. It's just going to go. It's just going to go one extreme to the other. I even did some all clad with this years ago. Chrome and everything. And it came out just like it does today. No difference. Check that out. Wow, look at that. Anyway, well, let's let this dry. Let me clean this out just like before. Same thing. We're going to put the cup in the acetone and uh, shot through. Oh, there you go. Shot through here. Cap comes right off. Same thing. You disassemble it and throw it right in. All right. That's it. I'll meet you back at the bench, and we'll wrap this up. All right, here we are back at the bench. Here is the one that was soaking in the uh, acetone. Look at how clean it came out. I just dried it off. I didn't really even rub it. Look at that. So you put that in here. Here. And for this part, actually, before I do that, you just get a Q-tip. You know, a little cotton swab. Rub that out. Now nah, it's pretty clean. We only sprayed it for a few minutes. And that's it. You'll feel where these snap in. There it is. And that's it. Now they, you can keep them in these, these little nice containers. This is how I had them on the shelf. I had them on the shelf in these. And right above the shelf, I had the color chart. 
I printed from online. You know, gray is medium, it'll be whatever beige, red is this large, you know, so I knew whatever I reached for, you know, whatever job I was doing. It's, that's how I did it. Now this tool, I didn't show you what these other pieces do. Um, after a while, maybe you got to build up a paint in here. And what you do is you just, one of these is kind of like a reamer thing, goes in here. And you twist it around and break it up if there's any paint left in there. And the bigger end goes into the front. There's a little, it's shaped like that, like a half circle. It. it goes in there. If there's any paint that gets built up, if you wash it out like I showed you, you won't have a problem. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the system. And uh, this is what I got started on. And this is the first airbrush after using this for a billion years. Uh, this is my GSI Creos PS270. This is my Procon boy. And um, yeah, after this, never looked back. Uh, love this airbrush. Look at this. It looks like the day I got it. I've had this one for years. Look at it. Uh, it's a great airbrush. And yeah, I never looked back. And once I got into cleaning it, as I said, it's almost like a dream state for me, a zen-like. I, I enjoy cleaning it. My friend loves cleaning his guns. It's, it's just a precision thing, and um, it becomes uh, its almost like playing a video game. It becomes a joy. So I, I, don't, I, I clean these things once a week. I go through them. I love it. It means nothing to me. It's the same as thrill as painting or building a kit. So once I got into that zone, it didn't matter. This whole system... The reason why I got it was the easy cleanup. You know, to me, this is easy to clean up now, just the same way. But this is a nice system, and uh, I wish it was still around because, particularly when you buy one of these for 25 or 40 bucks, I mean, 50 bucks for some of their real good ones, um, I would have recommended them if these were out today because uh, I, I really got by on these and did quite a bit. And uh, I wish uh, they did make them because I would recommend them to uh, people today who want to just get started. I mean, you really can get in cheap with a, a good compressor and one of these at around 100 bucks. I wish it was still around. If you guys do want one and are interested, uh, you'll find a few of these models uh, on eBay. If you do searching, you got to do uh, testers. I think testers Aztec or Model Master Aztec with a K. There you go. Just, ter just search Aztec Airbrush. And you're going to see a lot of these, the, the full kit ones like this, which are good. They're worth it. And uh, that's what's going to pop up. And uh, the results speak for themselves. This is no better, I mean, no worse or whatever better than what you see me spray now. You know, look. I mean, this is like glass. There's not even an orange peel in this. None at all. So, yeah, that I just wanted to show you guys where I had got my start, and uh, this was it. And boy, I'll tell you, I got three here now. I must have had six at one point. They make this one in steel. It's all like chrome. This is all chrome. There's all metal body, and it's got a wheel in the back where you can adjust, like the stopper, like you do on these, where you can adjust the back. It had one of those, and uh, it. It, 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 you know, the sky's the limit on this lineup when it was out. And and, uh, and then Rust-Oleum, I think, took over and really gutted them out. They started we getting rid of them before Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum bought testers and all this stuff's gone. Everything's gone. So if you want one, this thing weighs about a half an ounce. <laughs> it, it gets the job done, but it is pretty light. But, uh, yeah, if you want one, eBay, search this name as I showed it. And... Uh, you, you, I gotta tell you, you won't be disappointed. It's a great little system. You might have to figure out your attachment ends. I bought a package of all different fittings, and they actually have one for Aztec airbrushes for the end here, just like they do for uh, the Badger ones and whatnot. So it does exist. Anyway, guys, that's it. That was my first airbrush, and I wanted to show you guys. I'm going back, what, 20 years? 92? Yeah, 20 years. So uh, <laughs> it goes back quite a ways. To, to where we are now, that's for sure. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I have a lot more to go. Um, coming up after this, I'm going to be doing, you know, my tool test where I test different tools and accessories. Uh, the next one will be the next video, and that will be all tools and accessories related to scribing and panel lining. And uh, I got some cool stuff, so you're going to want to be around to see that. So that'll be my next video. Anyway, have a great weekend, guys. As I said, please subscribe. 
please join my Patreon below. I'll be the first link below. Um, in my Patreon, I answer your questions on short video form. If you ask me, you know, uh, what does this paint look like with this sprayed on top of it? And I will do that live in the booth. I'll put down the base, and I will put the color on top. I'll do color combos. Any question you have like that, I'll do it live, and I'll put up the video. I'll answer you in video form. That's what I put up the Patreon for. And so far, it's been good. You guys have been asking some great questions, and I put them right up for you. And uh, I do appreciate it. Anyway, guys, have a great West rest of your weekend. Uh, I won't say happy Thanksgiving yet because I'll have another video before then. So uh, we'll see you early in the week. Have a good day, guys. Be good.